Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Ali. In today's video, I finally have another BuzzFeed Tasty Tested Recipe video. I have not done one of these in probably close to a year. These are hands down some of my absolute favorite videos to film, so I'm so excited to bring another one to you today. In today's video, we're gonna be testing out BuzzFeed Tasty's best sugar cookie recipe, and I thought that it could not be at a better time because the holidays are right around the corner and a lot of people like to make cut out sugar cookies or gingerbread cookies for the holiday and decorate them with their families. Now, I personally am a bag cookie mix type of gal. I love to make homemade cookies, but this recipe looks pretty intense and it looks very, very rigorous. But we're gonna do it. We're gonna see if they are really the best sugar cookies out there. If you guys have any other questions or concerns, after watching this video, just ask them in the comments below. I will also link all of my BuzzFeed Tasty videos in the description below if you would like to check them out for yourself. And without further ado, let's get baking. I will add the full recipe in the description below with all of the ingredients, but you want to start off with some softened butter, not melted, just softened butter. You should keep your butter out for a good hour before using it. To the butter, you want to add in your sugar and one of the first mystery ingredients. You want to add cream cheese to this recipe. Very interesting, but it works. Once you add all of those first ingredients, you want to use a stand mixer and you want to mix it on level five for about five minutes, making sure that you scrape down the edges thoroughly throughout the whole process. Something very crucial that I learned through trying out this recipe is that most people do not cream their butter and sugar slash cream cheese mixture to the right consistency. We usually beat it very quickly and the butter is still yellow. For this recipe, you want to beat it until the butter turns almost white. That means you added enough air into it and it's going to be very, very fluffy. So do this for a minimum of five minutes. Your arms will hurt, I am telling you that, but it will be worth it in the end. A good way to check that you are complete and ready to move on to the next step is to take a little bit of the quote unquote batter in your hand, rub it between your fingers, and if you don't feel any of those sugar granules anymore, you know that you are ready to move on. The very next step is to add in your eggs. You want one full egg and two egg yolks. I almost did egg whites in this one, as you can see in this clip, but luckily, I figured it out and I did have my cousin here saying, you're doing the egg whites, so make sure you're just doing two egg yolks and one full egg. Then you wanna add in some vanilla extract as well. The original recipe does call for almond extract as well. I personally love anything that tastes like almonds. I think it gives it a really nice flavor, but my cousin that I was baking with here in this video is definitely allergic to nuts. So I personally omitted the almond extract, but if you guys are not allergic, I would highly suggest adding it into this recipe. Then you just wanna take your stand mixer and you wanna mix it all together again until everything is well incorporated. Another thing that I have learned over the years and definitely through this recipe is to make sure whenever you're using dry ingredients to sift them into a separate bowl. So you wanna add in your flour, your salt, your baking powder, and you also want to add in the second mystery ingredient, which is cream of tartare. So you want to add that all into a sifter and then sift it together into a separate bowl. By sifting it, you're helping to make all these ingredients come out extremely fine, which means you're not going to have any clumps inside of your batter. If you are going to follow any step precisely, make sure it is this step right here. I know from personal experience in the past, I always just wanna dump all the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients and mix them all together in one shot, but unfortunately it just does not work that way. You have to incorporate this a little at a time. So I did a cup of sugar, blended it together, 
another cup of sugar blended cup of sugar where am i coming from a cup of dry ingredients blended it together a cup of dry ingredients into the wet ingredients blend it all together until i used up all of my dry ingredients i'm telling you if you do it all at the same time and you turn that mixer on you are going to have a snowstorm of flour and baking soda and baking powder and salt and any other dry ingredients that you added all over your kitchen. Once you're satisfied with the way that your dough came out, you want to separate it into a couple different batches. I did two batches and you want to place each of the batches on top of some saran wrap and then you want to wrap it up nice and tightly and place it in the refrigerator for at least two hours. You can keep this for up to three to four days inside of your refrigerator. The colder it is, the better it is going to set and the better that it is going to be when you place these in the oven, they will not spread. Once your dough has chilled for a significant amount of time, you want to prepare your workstation before rolling out the dough and cutting your actual cookies. To do this, you want to take some flour and you want to place it down on your hard surface and you also want to sprinkle some on your rolling pin as well. Then you want to take your dough and you want to add some flour on top of that as well. This dough is very, very sticky and I know from experience that if you don't put enough flour down on your hard surface, your dough could likely stick to the actual hard surface and then you won't be able to take your cookies out. So I added a little bit too much flour not necessarily too much flour but I added an excess amount well my cookies came out really good so it definitely did not hinder the recipe by any means then you just want to take your rolling pin and you want to roll out your dough I believe to a fourth of an inch you want these to be about a fourth of an inch in width and now comes the fun part take all of your cookie cutters and just go crazy with this add as many different designs as you would like and then take them off of the hard surface and place them onto a greased down cookie sheet Do not throw away your excess dough, just roll it into a ball again, kind of knead it together and repeat this process over and over again until you get as many lovely cookies as you can possibly create. I only use about a third of the original batter while making these cookies. I'm saving the other two thirds for a later date this week to make more cookies. And I was shocked at how many cookies I could make just by using a third of this batter. You can honestly make tons of cookies with this original recipe. Place your cookies in the oven at 350 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes depending on your oven. This is what my cookies look like when I took them out. They should still be very light in color and just very, very gently brown on the edges. Okay, so here is where I steered away from the recipe just a little bit. The recipe calls for royal icing and again, I'm leaving that original recipe in the description below. To make royal icing, you do need to use egg whites that are not cooked, and I am pregnant, and although I did a lot of research saying that it is safe, I just wasn't comfortable with eating raw egg whites, even though I'm beating them together. I just wasn't comfortable with that fact, so I decided to make a recipe for the icing that my grandmother used to make when she was alive for our Italian cookies. It is very, very simple. It is just powdered sugar, water, vanilla extract, and a little bit of salt, and you just mix it together until you're happy with the consistency. 
There's honestly no recipe for this. If you asked my grandma when she was alive for recipe, she would say, I don't have recipes, I just throw things together. So I just kind of throw things together as well. If you guys would like me to try to figure out the increments of the recipe, I will be happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments below. If you would like to color your icing, you can place it into a bunch of different containers and just add some food coloring. Gel food coloring would be best. Mix it together and then you're ready to start decorating your cookies. I am adding an outline to most of these cookies and I'm trying the flooding method where I'm allowing the outline to harden a little bit and then I'm adding more of the icing in the middle, adding a toothpick to it to spread it all out and then just adding all of my decorations. As you can see in this one, I didn't necessarily do that. I just added all the icing on and I just used a bunch of different colors to make it really pretty and really festive. This icing along with royal icing does harden very quickly. So if you're planning on adding sprinkles, make sure to do it right after you add the icing onto it while it is still wet and tacky. And voila, here are some of the finished cookies. This isn't even all the cookies that I made. These are just like my absolute favorite ones. They came out so cute. I don't mean to like toot my own horn, but I'm just so happy with how they all came out with the shape, with the size, with the colors. I was just really, really impressed with this recipe. Okay, several hours later, four hours to be exact, it took me four hours to complete these cookies, but I don't even care because they are so cute. I am so proud of how they came out. They were extremely easy, but very, very time consuming. So the actual work was not hard. It just took a really long time to make them, but they're so cute. So these are my two favorite. The two Christmas trees are my absolute favorite. Here's Christmas tree one. I put a bunch of sprinkles on top of the icing and here's Christmas tree two. You guys got a good look at all of them that I made in that previous clip. So they are really cute, but the important part is how they taste. Part of me wants them to taste really, really good because they took me so long. But the other part of me wants them to taste exactly the same as the bagged sugar cookies because I can make those in like an hour and I know if these taste good, I'm only gonna wanna make these in the future. So enough talking, look how cute, let's dig on in. I'm gonna try this one because there's lots and lots of sprinkles on it and let's hope for the best. Three, two, and one. We have a problem. These are honestly the best sugar cookies I've ever had. Darn it, that means I'm only gonna wanna make these in the future and they took like four hours. So we'll call these like our specialty cookies. These are honestly like well done tasty. These are really freaking good. The cookie is smooth, a little bit crumbly, not too crumbly. The icing, if I do say so myself, is delicious. I love the crunch from the sprinkles. They're so adorable and honestly, they really do taste really, really good. Like really, really good. I'm gonna go eat the rest of these and have myself a very good time. So BRB guys. And that is it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and you enjoy my videos. I love you guys so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your love and your support on my channel. It means the absolute world to me. I hope that you guys are having a beautiful day and I look forward to talking to you all soon. Bye guys.